Okay, this is the table. Uh, now let me add a search. So to add a search, I guess for table we have header toolbar and within this header toolbar we can add a toolbar. Okay, now inside toolbar you can just place one search field. Okay, so I added a search field here and for header toolbar just remove this. We don't want all these properties. But for head uh, for search field, there is a uh, there is an event called life change in this. You can even add a suggestion items to search field. Enable suggestions, false, enable to max link placeholder. This we don't need. I'll, I'll remove all this, okay? Yeah, to this search field. Header toolbar, there is a closing tag of toolbar. Yeah. Okay, so now inside the search field, there is an event called like change. And I'll say on live search table data. Okay, so I'll, I'll go back to the controller and I'll add one method. So now first of all, yeah, so let's see whether there is a search field or not in a table on top of table. Okay, you can see there is a search field, uh, but uh, the search field is taking entire row. Uh, let's add a toolbar spacer. OK, so I'm just adding a toolbar spacer. So after adding a toolbar spacer, uh, we can see at least the search field will move on right hand side. Looks like it's not moving. percent yeah so we have a search field on right hand side now yeah okay now anything if we search like spatially we will add a two filters okay to the table like we will add a add a filter based on product id or name like if if user is searching for anything within the search field so as of now we will add a two filters based on product id and name and even category so let's add a filter based on this three uh, properties only so first within this search field okay this is the search field that we have so first of all, we need to get the value. What value we, we are getting? So see, this is the O event which we have and we have added it on live change. OK, when we add it on the live change. So how to get a real time value from that search field? So we'll put a breakpoint and I'll see uh, how to get that value. OK, I'll go to the sources. And let's put a breakpoint in a search field. OK, let me search for H. See, as soon as I search for H. Let's see in which parameter or property we got that value. So we, we can get that value in M parameter that is new value. OK, you can get like this O event dot get. Parameter. And now inside get parameter, we, we have to pass new value. 
okay see guys m parameter uh, in a o event o event means what is o event see this o event will carry all the search field related details okay because this live change okay that on live search table data this is a function and this event or this function will carry all the details of search field with the help of o event because o event it is a event which is triggered from the search field so that event will only carry the details related to the search field okay so when we type any character within that search field on that live change event the event will be fired on each and every keystroke and then from that event we can get the value current value from that search field and then how to get that using m parameters okay so there is a m parameters so if you want to go inside or you want to get a parameter so for that get parameter is the method and inside get parameter we have to pass property name in single or double quotes so that's why we pass new value which is a property and which is holding the current value from that search field okay so i'll copy this statement and i'll add that here to the o event so now in s value we we should have the current or the latest value from the search field and based on that we have to filter out the data so we'll add s value okay so what we will do now so if we have s value then i'll create a filter here so we need a filter array wait so i'll say a filter dot push and inside i'll pass a filter constructor Let's say path. Uh, we we have to pass the filter based on product ID, category, and name. Only three properties we will pass. So filter operator must be contains. So I'm going with contains. The uh, contains means it will check for any character which is matching within that name, category, or product ID. So we'll go with the contains operator. Okay. We'll go with the contents and uh, see this is the operator for that. And last we'll pass value one. So value one will get it from this S value. OK, so like that we have to pass. Couple of filters. So first is product ID next I'll pass with name. So this value one will remain the same guys and last is product category. OK, so how many filters are there product ID name and category and all has a contains operator means what is the purpose of contains? So it will not check for the exact value. It will check for any character which is matched within that value. Let's say I'm searching for OK, I'll, I'll tell you. Let's say I'm searching for uh, 80. So you can see in name we have 80. Even in category we have 80. So wherever there is a match with 80 within any character or any word, so that records will be filtered out. Okay, that's why I'm going with the contains operator. Now after creating these filters, so we we need a final filter. Okay, we need a final filter because as I said you cannot directly pass. And now here you can pass filters and for filters pass filter array. And then you can pass and and you can pass it as false. OK. Or condition you pass because it will help you to filter out all the records. And now finally, after creating the filter, how to filter the table first of all. Right, because earlier like we have directly passed filters and sorter here within a bind items and data was getting filtered out. But in now now we have to filter out the data. 
when the table is created, right? When the binding of table is already done. On top of that, how to filter out the data if user is searching in this input field or in search field. So on runtime, if you want to filter out the data, first of all, get the ID of table. Okay. So write this dot get view dot by ID and just pass ID table dot. We have to get the bindings. Okay, get binding. And what is a binding name which we want to get? Items. Items dot. Then there is a filter. Okay, guys, there is a filter. See, I'll on, on runtime, I'll show you. Wait. So if you're writing this code, okay, this is the table dot get binding get binding and inside get binding you pass the binding name or aggregation name that is items dot then there is a filter inside the filter method we have to pass okay inside dot filter you pass this o final filter that's it Okay, this is the way to filter out the data. Okay, now let's see. Now let's see whether we can filter out the data or not that we have to see now. Okay, so let's say I want to search for uh, HT. Uh, which Okay, let's say I want to search for ACC. Okay, I'll search for ACC. Can you see? Wherever ACC is matching, only that records I'm able to see. See, it's now searching for the category. But let's say we want to search for name, and that is notebook. See, as soon as I cleared every, I, I, I would be able to see all the records. Okay, but now let's say I want to search for notebook. See, am I getting all the records? Only for notebooks. Now it's filtering out for the name property. OK, earlier it was filtering out for the category. See, as soon as I remove the data will come back. Now let's say we want to search for HD hyphen one zero zero two. See, did I got the product? Guys. Yes, yes. OK, this is how you can pass like it's it's not mandatory to implement for all the fields, but few fields which are highly used for searching purpose only for those fields. You can add the filter. OK, and this is how you can implement the search functionality. So one thing I'll tell you whenever whenever you are clearing the search field, don't pass any filter in else. OK. So if you see when we are passing the filter, if if the value exists for that filter, then only we are passing the filter. But let's say if there is no value and still you want to filter out, right? Then in that case, your filter functionality will not work properly. Make sure not to pass any filter if value is not exist. OK, don't filter out the data based on blank value. See. Or for empty string, don't pass any filter. OK, so you can do any filter. See for screen related data, I'm, I'm able to see. See now when I when I removed the search, uh, when I removed that clause, right? But my data is not cleared out, <laughs> right? But on live change, it's working. OK, but on live change, see now I'm clicking on this cross. Data is not clearing out. Still, we are able to see all the records. See, for example, laptops. So when I click on this cross mark, see data is not clearing out. What is the reason? Why data is not clearing out?
search for search field. This is the search field. Go to the events and there is the change event. Event is fired when user changes value of search field field. Unlike the live change event, the change event is not fired for each key press. OK, so this uh, definitely it will fire the change event in that case. And when it fires the change event, then yes, the data will be cleared out. Yeah. Again, there is a search. This event will fire if user is clicking on the search icon. OK, and after that, there is a suggest. Suggest means uh, you might have seen a search field like when you type on top, you'll get a suggestions from that list. So that also you can do. OK, so guys, your assignment 